Ubuntu has always been one of the most recognizable names in the Linux world, a distribution that for many people represents freedom, openness, and choice. For years, Ubuntu marketed itself as Linux for human beings, a system designed to be approachable, friendly, and respectful of user control. But in recent times, a growing number of Linux users feel that Ubuntu is drifting away from those original values. The discussion today is not just about technical changes or new features, but about a deeper concern that Ubuntu is slowly forcing artificial intelligence-driven features and cloud-connected services onto its users, whether they want them or not. This video explores where this perception comes from, why people are upset, what Canonical's motivations might be, and whether Ubuntu is truly forcing AI on Linux users or if the situation is more nuanced than it appears at first glance. To understand why this topic has become so heated, we need to look at the broader context of the tech industry. Artificial intelligence is no longer a niche field reserved for research labs and big corporations. AI is everywhere from smartphones and web browsers to office software and operating systems. Companies see AI as the future as a way to lock users into ecosystems, collect valuable data, and offer services that can be monetized. Microsoft integrates AI deeply into Windows, Apple is embedding AI into macOS and iOS, and Google has built its entire business around data-driven intelligence. Against this backdrop, Canonical, the company behind Ubuntu, does not want to be left behind. They want Ubuntu to remain relevant in a world where AI-driven tools are becoming standard expectations rather than optional extras. However, Linux users are not like typical consumers of proprietary operating systems. Many people choose Linux precisely because it gives them control. They want to decide what runs on their system, what data is shared, and which services are enabled. When Ubuntu introduces AI-related features that feel baked into the system, even if they are technically optional, it triggers alarm bells. Users begin to ask whether Ubuntu is still respecting the Linux philosophy of choice, or if it is starting to behave more like the corporate platforms Linux users tried to escape from. One of the earliest sparks in this debate comes from Ubuntu's history with online services integration. Years ago, Ubuntu introduced features that sent search queries from the desktop to online services. That move caused significant backlash, with users accusing Canonical of spying and prioritizing partnerships over privacy. Canonical eventually walked back some of those decisions, but the memory remains fresh in the community. When Ubuntu now talks about AI-powered search, AI assistance, and cloud-based intelligence, many users see history repeating itself. They fear that AI is simply the next layer of data collection and monetization, wrapped in a modern buzzword. In recent Ubuntu releases, Canonical has been more vocal about AI integration. We hear about AI-enhanced developer tools, AI-powered command line helpers, and plans for smarter system management using machine learning. On paper, these features sound helpful. An AI assistant that can help you debug code, suggest commands, or optimize system performance could genuinely improve productivity. The problem is not the existence of these tools, but how they are integrated and presented. When such features are enabled by default, deeply embedded into the desktop experience, or tied to Canonical's cloud services, users start to feel like they are being nudged, or even pushed, toward using AI, whether they want to or not. Another major concern revolves around Snap packages. Ubuntu heavily promotes Snaps as the future of Linux application distribution. Snaps are controlled by Canonical, delivered through Canonical's infrastructure, and often include automatic updates and sandboxing features. Recently, Canonical has hinted at using AI to improve snap management, recommendations, and security analysis. While this may sound beneficial, critics argue that it further centralizes control. If AI-driven decisions determine which apps are recommended, how updates are prioritized, or how security policies are enforced, then users are effectively trusting an opaque system they cannot fully audit or control. For a community that values transparency, this feels like a step in the wrong direction. Privacy is another central issue in the Ubuntu is forcing AI narrative. AI systems thrive on data. They need logs, usage patterns, telemetry, and feedback to function effectively. Even if Canonical claims that data is anonymized or minimal, many Linux users are deeply skeptical. They worry that enabling AI features means more data leaving their machines, more connections to remote servers, and more potential for abuse or breaches. 
The fear is not necessarily that Canonical has malicious intent, but that once the infrastructure is in place, it can be expanded or repurposed in ways users did not originally agree to. Some users also point to the language Canonical uses when discussing AI. Marketing materials often frame AI as an inevitable evolution, something users should embrace rather than question. This rhetoric can feel dismissive to long-time Linux users who value informed consent and explicit choice. When AI features are described as the default path forward, opting out can start to feel like swimming against the current. Even if there is a toggle buried in settings, the psychological effect is that AI is the normal mode of operation and disabling it is an exception. On the other hand, it is important to consider Canonical's perspective. Ubuntu is not just a community project. It is also a commercial product used by enterprises, cloud providers, and developers around the world. These users often demand modern features, including AI integration. Enterprises want AI-driven monitoring, automated troubleshooting, and intelligent resource management. Developers want AI assistance that can speed up coding and reduce errors. If Ubuntu fails to provide these capabilities, those users might migrate to other platforms that do. From this viewpoint, Canonical is not forcing AI out of greed, but responding to market demand and trying to keep Ubuntu competitive. There is also the argument that Ubuntu is not truly forcing AI because alternatives exist. Linux is a vast ecosystem. If you do not like Ubuntu's direction, you can switch to Debian, Fedora, Arch, Linux Mint, or countless other distributions. Many Ubuntu-based distros already remove or modify Canonical's decisions, offering a more traditional experience. In this sense, the freedom of Linux remains intact. Ubuntu can choose its path, and users can choose whether to follow it. Critics of the forcing AI narrative say that complaining about Ubuntu while continuing to use it ignores the fundamental freedom that Linux provides. Yet this counterargument does not fully satisfy everyone. Ubuntu is often the default recommendation for new Linux users. It is pre-installed on some hardware, heavily promoted in tutorials, and widely supported by software vendors. When Ubuntu changes, it affects a large portion of the Linux user base, including people who may not be aware of alternatives or comfortable switching. For these users, Ubuntu's decisions effectively shape their Linux experience. If AI features are prominent and enabled by default, they may feel forced simply because opting out requires knowledge and effort they do not yet have. Another layer to this controversy is trust. Linux users tend to trust community-driven projects more than corporate-led ones. Canonical, despite contributing significantly to open source, is still a private company with its own interests. When AI enters the picture, trust becomes even more critical, because AI systems are often complex and opaque. Users want to know exactly what the system is doing, what data it uses, and how decisions are made. If Canonical cannot communicate this clearly and convincingly, suspicion will grow, regardless of the actual technical implementation. The debate also touches on ideology. For some Linux users, the resistance to AI is not just about Ubuntu, but about a broader discomfort with the direction of technology. They see AI as a tool that concentrates power, reduces human agency, and normalizes surveillance. In this worldview, Ubuntu embracing AI feels like a betrayal of Linux's roots as a countercultural movement against centralized control. Whether this view is fair or not, it is emotionally powerful and influences how people interpret Canonical's actions. At the same time, there are users who welcome AI in Ubuntu. They argue that rejecting AI outright is unrealistic and reactionary. They point out that AI is just another tool, like networking, graphics acceleration, or package management. When used responsibly, it can enhance the Linux experience without undermining freedom. These users believe the real issue is not AI itself, but implementation. If Canonical provides clear documentation, strong privacy guarantees, and easy ways to disable or replace AI components, then Ubuntu can offer AI features without forcing them. So is Ubuntu actually forcing AI on Linux users? The answer depends on how you define forcing. Ubuntu is not preventing users from disabling features, nor is it locking the system behind proprietary AI services in a way that cannot be removed. However, Ubuntu is clearly steering users toward an AI-enabled future, making AI features more prominent, more integrated, and more normalized. For users who prefer a minimal, offline, or purely traditional Linux experience, this can feel like pressure, even if it is not an absolute requirement. 
Looking ahead, the situation is likely to intensify. AI is not going away. Canonical will continue to invest in AI-driven tools, especially for enterprise and cloud markets. The challenge for Ubuntu will be balancing innovation with respect for user choice. Transparency will be key. Users need to know what AI components are present, what they do, and how to control them. Opt-out mechanisms should be clear, accessible, and respected. If Canonical fails to do this, the narrative that Ubuntu is forcing AI on users will only grow stronger. For users, the takeaway is to stay informed. Linux gives you the power to choose, but that power only matters if you understand your options. If Ubuntu's direction aligns with your needs, then its AI features may be a welcome addition. If not, remember that the Linux ecosystem is vast and diverse. There are distributions that prioritize minimalism, privacy, and user control above all else. The debate around Ubuntu and AI is not just about one distribution, but about the future of Linux itself and how it navigates a world increasingly shaped by artificial intelligence. In the end, this controversy highlights a fundamental tension. Linux wants to remain relevant and competitive, but it also wants to stay true to its core values. Ubuntu sits right at the center of this tension. Whether it can successfully integrate AI without alienating its community will depend on the choices Canonical makes in the coming years. What is clear is that Linux users are watching closely, questioning loudly, and refusing to accept change without discussion. And perhaps that, more than anything else, proves that the spirit of Linux is still very much alive.